You who are loved by God, may grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. The Christmas story changes everything. Think of those people in uh, Bethlehem, in town for just a census taking, but then after everything happened in those days, I'm sure they left town with new hopes and dreams. Imagine Joseph. I'm sure his plans were to have a, a nice family carpentry business, you know, a cozy home where his wife Mary presided, surrounded by children who would arrive in a timely and traditional fashion. Mary, too, I'm sure, held similar dreams. Maybe the wise men had a southern vacation planned, but ended up traveling to Bethlehem instead. Surely they did not expect to worship a poor little baby in a barn. And the shepherds may have uh, planned a night of camaraderie around the campfire, not a frightening encounter with a host of angels. And King Herod may have been plotting new ways to consolidate his political power, but surely he, he did not dream that a new and greater power one based on love and justice and service and humility would enter into this world. So who knows how many dreams, plans, visions were changed when Christ was born in Bethlehem. And how many lives today are still being touched and shaped and redirected by the power of God become human. Yes, there is a change a coming. My friends, what are your dreams? What are your goals? What's on your mind these days? Is there a struggle? Is there a difficulty? Do you wish things were still the way they used to be? Or are you ready to try something new? What's being changed? What new plans are you making? What is it that you have come here to see? Advent is a time for all of us to remember where the true power, hope, and promise of life reside. They rest in a God who knows, loves, and understands us in ways we simply cannot comprehend. Advent is a season that wakes us up to the possibility that maybe, just maybe, the God who cares for us more than we know might have a better vision for us than we have for ourselves. That is true for us, and that is also true for John the Baptist. Now, just last week, we heard John the Baptist crying out in the wilderness with an unmistakable and bold voice, confident. And John told us about the one who is coming to baptize with fire. We won't use that on Ada today. John, John told his listeners that Jesus was going to use his winnowing fork to toss us all up into the air. And those with spiritual substance would be gathered into a saving granary, and the rest phew, burned with unquenchable fire. Now, with a vision like that, you can just imagine the questions going through John's mind as he sat in his prison cell. It seems like the confidence he showed as he preached and baptized at the River Jordan was now kind of wavering. Especially when he hears that Jesus is bouncing little babies on his knee and saying you have to be like one of them to get into the kingdom of heaven. John wants to know if his life work is being fulfilled. And so he sends folks to ask Jesus that question. Are you the one who is to come? And Jesus doesn't respond directly. Jesus starts by saying, go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news preached to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. The 
The same for us today. Jesus doesn't so much say, listen, I have important words to tell you, as look at what my love can do for you and see what I have done for others. The things that Jesus did in Galilee, he still does. We who are blind to the truth about ourselves or blind to the needs of others or even blind to the presence of God through the living and risen Christ have our eyes opened once again. We who are burdened by sin and sickness are forgiven and healed. We who have become deaf to the voice of conscience, deaf to the cries of others, even deaf to the calling from God, we have our hearing restored once again. And those of us who are dead, dead uh, deep down somewhere inside, are raised once again to newness and the joyful wonder of life. We who are poor receive the riches of God's love in our lives. During the season of Advent, as God prepares our Christmas gift of a Savior coming to deliver us, God wants to draw our attention to the greatness of the gift. How do we get the attention of the people? Well, Jesus has a wonderful way of helping us see ourselves as God sees us. Jesus, the revealer, lets us know that God sees us as beautiful people, as lovable people, as people who are forgivable, as people who are capable of un heard things. Jesus is the one who loves us and wishes to make us whole, the one who will seek us out so that we may never be lost. Jesus has the keys to release whatever keeps us from freedom. Jesus is making it happen, continuing to make it happen. We are being mended. We are being made whole we are being raised from the dead. The changes around and within us are signs of the reign of God, the new creation. And there's a line at the end of Paul's letter to the Galatians when he says, really, the only thing that matters is the new creation. That is the only thing that matters for Paul and for us, for John the Baptist. The new creation is everything. Talk about change. And this new creation is the life that comes as a gift in baptism. When we are sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever, we are God's own children. And this new life is here right now. Perhaps you've heard Pastor Seth talk some time about this already, not yet kind of idea. And, um, well, the already is here <laughs> because it doesn't do us a whole lot of good to think that new life is only something yet to come. Yes, some things are yet to come, but there's also a lot of joy that is ours today. God is present at this very moment. God loves us completely. God speaks to us, heals us, washes, forgives, and makes us new. And we see and experience this newness as we remember and give thanks for baptism and as little sweet baby Ada, who's not gonna scream, um, is baptized today. <laughs> but even if she does, we'll all scream along with her because we are all walking wet as baptized children of God throughout our lives. And we lift up our hearts and our hands and our voices and, and we get our feet moving right now. <clears throat> and if we're too weak or scared or if we lack the courage or if we're uncertain of changes ahead. God will lift us up anyhow. And if we're simply curious or kind of holding back, we can turn to God with John the Baptist and ask, 
Are you the one who is to come, or should I wait for another? And with John the Baptist, we'll hear those words from Jesus yet again. The blind receive their sight. The lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. Such hope-filled words, hope that sees beyond our own visions, hope that is with us when we hurry, hope that helps us wait. It is an Advent hope. Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Amen.